You know what's weird is the older I get, the more I find out about myself, and I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like finding out new stuff about myself. I thought it was just gonna be working, and maybe a woman would touch me sometime. I thought that was a. <laughs> I thought that was adulthood. Now it's just it's finding out, realizing things about myself, self realization. I didn't like that. You know what I realized recently? I don't like unconsented conversation. <laughs> Just out in the world, living somebody I don't know talks to me. Oh, I'm like, none of that, please. <laughs> Just waiting at Starbucks, and the guy's like, oh, long line, right? I'm like, ugh, nigga, don't, ugh. <laughs> Just trying to get my white chocolate mocha and go home. Don't talk to me. Because it makes me feel awkward. And if you make me feel awkward, there's nothing I can do but make you feel awkward, because I'm not about to be standing here awkward by myself. Right. That's ridiculous. I refuse to do that. Like, I, I box for exercise, and sometimes I'll jog, and I'll stop at a light, and I'll throw a couple punches. This dude saw me throwing punches. He's like, oh, ho, ho. you got a match coming up? I was like, ah. <laughs> so I looked over. I said, no, sir, I don't have a match coming up. These white women just keep fighting back and escaping. And I threw a couple <laughs> more punches. I ran. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is weird, being a black man from Kentucky and like saying this out loud, I should hate white people a lot more than I do. I should. <laughs> Fucking love white people. <laughs> Some of y'all was tripping on January 6th, but most of y'all have been pretty good to me. <laughs> most of y'all have been pretty good to me. Like I've been, felt like every white friend I had did some version of this during uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, whether it was Facebook, text message, in person, hey, we're so sorry that you're black. We're so sorry. <laughs> it's so awful. We didn't know how hard it was being black, but you're black. <laughs> and we apologize for your blackness and our whiteness. We apologize for everything. I don't know what I'm saying. Here's some homemade cupcakes. <laughs> I just got gifts for a month. That was the best Black History Month ever. Like, I had a white girl who I hadn't talked to since college. Since college, hadn't talked to her. She said, being black is hard pick a pair and sent me the link to the Jordan's website. Yeah, that's the most racist gift that I did accept. I accepted it, <laughs> took it, picked a nice pair too. It was like a nice $250 pair of shoes and she hand delivered them to my house. She brought them to my house. She opened the box. It was glowing like the suitcase from Pulp Fiction. It was nice. And I was like, ma'am, this is such a gracious gift. I need to let you know something. You could have just fucked me. That would have been good too. Like, <laughs> Pussy is still reparations. I don't care. Sorry about that kid, you'll learn though. Uh, <laughs> fixes almost everything. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's I, I, love, I love white women sometimes. Sometimes you guys are great. Um, sometimes you bother me, sometimes you bother me. Like you do shit that like, it's just weird. Like, like they're doing this new thing called girl dinner. You know what girl dinner is? It's just having a little snack but for dinner. They're not even appropriating cultures no more. They're just being broke for fun. That's not... <laughs> you had a bag of popcorn all day? Me too, today, all right? <laughs> I'm broke. <laughs> also, I grew up like that. I had two parents who worked a full-time job. You had to survive. And so you, I know how to make a bag of popcorn last all day. You pop it, and you eat half of it. Then you go outside and play. Your friends are playing. You're like, oh, you got Skittles? Put it in the bag. You got pretzel sticks? Put it in the bag. You make your own goddamn trail mix trying not to die before mom and daddy get home. That's not special. You know what? You are appropriating the culture. You're appropriating my poor culture, and I don't like it. So I'm fighting back against white women. I'm appropriating white women culture. Next time I go on a date with a white woman, I'm going to order a salad, and I'm going to let her order the most expensive thing on the menu, and I'm eating off that bitch's plate. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes, brother. Yes. And when she looks at me all funny, like, oh, what are you doing? I'm going to make up a cute little name. Oh, these, huh? these are called nigger num-nums. <laughs> Thank you, black man. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. It's, I, I, I've been looking up more like great black men to be like, because I, I think I'm a funny guy, but I want to leave more than just silly jokes behind. So I look up great black men to be like. And you look up the word great black men, like you get Martin Luther King, you get Malcolm X, you get Frederick Douglass. There's a lot of black men that they don't talk about, that don't get the respect they deserve. Why is nobody talking about how fucking amazing Dennis Rodman was? Nobody's talking about it. Yes, yes! Nobody's talking about it! You understand he's the best rebounder of all time, bar none. Won championships with Michael Jordan in this fucking city that we're in right now. Also, he was a professional wrestler in WCW. 
Also, he decided by himself, nobody gave him permission, I'm gonna be the ambassador for America to North Korea. And he just went over there. <laughs> and he was chilling with that dude. What's his name, Kim Jong Chubby? He was hanging out with him all day. Not only did he date Carmen Electro, one of the sexiest women ever, and marry Madonna, former queen of white women. But he also was the first person to marry himself. Do you understand he's paving the way for non-binary people? Because it's cool to be a they, them now, but he was the first person who was an us. Do you understand? <laughs> I don't get why he doesn't get the credit that he is. Why? Why? Because he looks like an alien hopped into a black dude? That's fucking infuriating. <laughs> is it, I don't think you guys know this. As black men, and black women go through it too, but to a way less degree. As a black man, I have to constantly prove my blackness to other black people. But then I also have to prove it to white people, and that's ridiculous, because I look like this. <laughs> Why, just because I watch anime, I'm not black enough? That's weird. <laughs> that's weird that I have to do certain things to be black enough. Do you understand black enough doesn't exist? Do you understand if the police pull me over, I can't be like, excuse me, officer. <laughs> As you can see by these Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> I am not that black. <laughs> He's not gonna be like, okay, little blue eyes, white drag, get on the ground, nigga. Like he's like, <laughs> the stereotypes that black men have are ridiculous. They're dumb. They're all dumb. It's ridiculous. Everybody has stereotypes, right? You know what the ones with black men are? It's black men uh, can dance, uh, play basketball, and have huge penises. And I'm sorry, what magical nigga are you looking for? All three? <laughs> all three? You think every single black man, every single black man has strength in sport? The God-given gift of rhythm and a hammer dick? <laughs> every black man, that's impossible. It's not every black man, it's just me and I'm tired of niggas taking credit for my accomplishments. Race comes up weird, like in my life. It comes up weird, people ask me to not talk about it. I'm like, ah, it comes up all the time and I don't expect it to come up. Like I watched Hamilton and I was furious at all the white people cheering when Thomas Jefferson came out. <laughs> Do you realize he fucked slaves and created not, uh, not he fucked slaves and created biracial people in this country? That's what, <laughs> that's what he did. That's what Thomas Jefferson did. But he came out there and was like, ha, ha, ha. And they were like, yeah. <laughs> you know what's weird about Hamilton that I didn't like? I didn't like that Hamilton, it's, it's revisionist history. Because it's supposed to be about the creation of this country. And all the founding fathers are played, it's supposed to be progressive, because all the founding fathers are played by people of color, and they rap when they talk. He ba da ba dee ba ba dee ba day. Like, it's revisionist history. Founding fathers weren't black. And if we talk about the creation of this country, we have to be honest with ourselves. Slaves built this country. Not one goddamn slave was in Hamilton. Not one. That's fucking weird. That's weird. All right? I think there should be slaves in Hamilton. Not only should there be slaves, every slave should be played by a barefoot white guy just in the background. <laughs> in the background, picking cotton, singing old white hymns. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Sweet Caroline. <laughs> Gets hit with the whip. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's just, I don't know. I try, not, I try not to talk about like some things because people get like too angry. Like, you talk about dating, everybody talks about dating, but like women get very angry when you talk about dating from the man's perspective. Like I heard two girls at a bar talking about, uh, like talk, men are dogs, men suck, they're dogs, they'll never change. And I just turned around and said, hey ma'am, it's your fault they're not changing. You said it yourself, men are dogs. Why would they change? White bitches love dogs. <laughs> Hey, dude, white women love dogs. White people in general, they, white women love dogs more than people, more than human children. That's fucked up. Ain't that fucked up, kid? <laughs> more than people? That's ridiculous. They're like, well, some kids are just evil. I'm like, what about some dogs that are just naturally violent? They're like, no, all dogs are pure heart. The only thing that makes a bad dog is a bad owner. I'm like, kids have bad owners. They're called parents. A misogynist doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen like a, a kid is walking around and his father's like, man, fuck these bitches. And little Jimmy's like, yeah, bitches. That's what happens. <laughs> like they say pit bulls are naturally violent, right? I don't believe pit bulls are naturally violent. I don't believe that. I believe that it's a bad owner that makes a bad pit bull. I do, however, understand why Michael Vick chose them. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Every pit bull I've seen looks like it did five to 10. How? <laughs> Every pit bull's been doing push-ups and sit-ups since the morning? <laughs> Just walk around the yard. I'm like, oh God. 
walking up to the dinner ball, sniff said, is this kibbles? I said kibbles and bitch. Make it again, bitch. Like, whoa. But you love dogs. You love dogs. And now we have a problem in this country. We have a problem in this country with guns, whether you're pro-gun or whether you're anti-gun. Too many people are getting guns who don't need them. And we have a problem in this fucking country with guns. And now it's not even just black kids dying in drive-bys. White kids are dying in schools. But nobody cares. Nothing's changing. Because you don't really care about kids. But you love dogs. What I'm saying is, if we really want change in this country, we really, if we really want legislation, one of you heroes needs to get out there and shoot up a doggy daycare. That's what it's... The fact that you're going, oh, is proving my point right now. Let's use white women's anger to carry us into a better future. That's all I'm saying. Normally a comedian would try to go out on a high note, but uh, I wanted to teach you guys a lesson. <laughs> you guys have been great. I'm James. Thank you so much. James Fisher Jr.